Eligibility from Excel Academy. Kindly make sure that you subscribe to this YouTube channel because we have a lot of work and a lot of um, lectures that we are going to upload on this particular channel so make sure that you subscribe and make sure that in case you have a question you can whatsapp me you can inbox me you can even register with excel academy by simply inboxing me whatsapping me calling me on the number which is in the description so let's quickly look at some mcq questions from anatomy so the first question is the following is the ascending order of tissue preparation steps in histology so it's very important for every student who is doing anatomy to be able to know these steps step by step so make sure that you are able to follow up and make sure that you know how a tissue is prepared okay so we need to understand that the first step is just simply a uh, fixation then there will be dehydration where water will be removed from the tissue so fixation is where now the tissue is being preserved and then after fixation there will be a thing of dehydration removing the water and then there will be clearing and lastly there will be embedding and the last stage which is just simply staining and after it is being stained that will help us to use a microscope for us to view that particular tissue so the answer here was just simply a the next one is choose the correct statement concerning the myelin okay so we have the first one which is myelin decrease the velocity of an action potential this is wrong because the presence of myelin will just increase the words the the velocity of an action potential then we can look at myelinating cells of the pns which is the peripheral nervous system myelinate only one internode yeah so this is correct because the because you need to understand that the peripheral nervous system has just one axon so as just one axon and then my latest cells of the central nervous system only myelinate several internodes of same axon so if you look at this question this question is just wrong because it's saying same axon when in the actual sense this guy has multiple axons so this guy has multiple axons okay then my lentient cells of the peripheral nervous system um nervous system i need several internode no the the answer is one uh one axon here so for this question the correct answer is just p in a sarcomia which of the following describe the length of the myelin sheath so my myosin myosin is just a thick is just a thick filament that's one thing you need to understand it's just a thick filament and this myelin is normally found in the what in a, a band it's found in the a band okay and then the other thing you need to understand is the the term the sarcomia so the sarcomia it moves from one z disc it moves from one z disc to another z disc it moves from one z disc to another z disc okay now when you talk of the sarcomia the sarcomia has two important parts you have the a band which contain myosin and then you have the i band which is known as the which is which contains actin so the i band contains actin yeah so there is actin filament so the answer here is just a which is in line with what the question is because we are looking for where we can um we can found we can find the thick filament which this thick filament or thick protein is myosin then which is true concerning the Havertian system so you need to understand that the Havertian system is found in the compact bone the Havertian system is found in the 
compact bone and this aversion system you can look at the presence of the lamella you can look at the presence of the the presence of the haversian canal you can see the haversian canal you can also check up the presence of the of the osteocyte in lacuna ostium sorry ostium osteocytes in lacuna yeah in lacuna but one thing you need to understand is that the haversian system is not found in the sponge bone so the answer here was simply a all right let me quickly move on and look at the next question let me move on and look at the next question which of the following is correct about the nephrons which of the following is correct about the nephrons so um is it about the nephron all right so if you look at this question this question is um is part of the urinary system so for those who are preparing for test one for test one this question is for test two so for this question it's not part of test one so i'm going to revise this same question when we talk about uh the preparation for test two yeah so this one i'll explain it in when we talk about test two but in the uh, in the in the actual sense when you talk of this question this question we are just talking about the nerve flow and this is just the urinary system the urinary system okay so uh i'll discuss this in the videos that i'm going to make for test two so concerning the proliferous phase of the menstrual cycle within the ovary so here we are looking at the proliferative phase so the proliferative phase in this phase the formation of the oocyte is the main event so the main event which happens at this stage is just the development of the of the oocyte all the following are target structure of hormone from the pituitary gland except dash so this one is a target this one is a target that one is a target the only one which is not a target is just a thicker external isolate of lagahan isolate of lagahan so if you look at isolate of lagahan we are just talking about the the pancreas so the isolate of lagahan are normally found in the pancreas and they play a role in the in the production of some excretes so um the answer here is the alpha cells are the most abundant beta cells are located mainly in the peripheral damage to b cell uh, result in diabetes mellitus type 2 h and e stays not differentiate so the answer here is a a you need to understand that um the isolate of laga and the alpha cells are the most abundant okay let's quickly move on and look at the next question so which of the following the which of the following structure passes through the quadrangular space in the upper limb so what exactly passes through the quadrangular space so the quadrangular space is one space which i have explained when i was doing the brachial plexus so please make sure that you watch watch the video the video about the dissection of the brachial plexus so there is a video about um the dissection or identifying different structures and that part i've done the brachial plexus so one thing we need to understand about the quadrangular space is that in the quadrangular space two important things pass through it one is the posterior circumference humeral artery which is correct this one is correct and then also the axillary artery so both uh posterior circumflex humeral artery and axillary artery they pass through the quadrangular space so this question had two answers okay 
Then we have regarding the, the lymphatic vessel, which statement is true. So there is the the cisterna cali lies anterior to the body of L1 on the right side. Thoracic duct enters the thorax through the um, esophageal high hiatus, which is wrong. The thoracic duct terminates at the union of the right and left are brachiocephalic veins. No because we know that this guy would drain into the subgravian vein. Then the cisterna coli has colorless lymph. No, it is whitish in color. So the answer is just A, which is the correct answer for this question. Sandra, who has been using arm clutches for three weeks after an accident, cannot extend a hand. So when you talk of um extension when you talk of extension this person cannot extend a hand so when she can't do ex she can't extend the hand that simply means that um the muscles which have been affected are the posterior muscles of the forearm posterior muscles of the forearm so you need to understand that the muscles which have been affected here are just the posterior muscles of the forearm. So since the posterior muscles of the forearm have been affected, one thing we can learn is that the posterior muscles of the forearm are normally innervated by the radial nerve. So the radial nerve is the one which is the main uh, innervator of the muscles of the forearm. So in this case, our answer is just B, which is the radial nerve. Okay, let's quickly move on and look at this other question. Sunzu sustains a wrist injury when he was playing football four days ago. You examine him and you notice a claw, clawing hand. So when you talk of clawing hand, if you watch my video on um, on the brachial plexus, I said that the crowing hand is related with the ulnar nerve. So the ulnar nerve is the nerve which is related to this condition. So the answer there is just C. Okay. So guys, uh, I have a lot of videos, a lot of questions that I'm going to post on this channel. So make sure that you subscribe to this channel and make sure that you share these same videos then which of the following veins of the heart lodges in the posterior interventricular groove so posterior interventricular groove so the 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 vein we are looking for the for the vein so when you talk of the vein which is found in that position this is just the middle cardiac vein so the middle cardiac vein is also known as the posterior intra posterior posterior interventricular interventricular tricular vein so the middle um the middle cardiac vein is also known as the posterior interventricular vein and this vein it's normally passes through the through the posterior intraventricular and then this one the great cardiac vein it's normally um it's normally passes in the anterior groove okay which of the following arteries passes immediately deep to the mid inguinal uh, points? So this one, it's a test two question. Actually, it's, it can be in test one or it can be in test two, depending on how fast your dissection has been done. So the answer for this question is just the, it's just the external iliac artery so the external iliac artery are the ones that passes immediately deep to the mid inguinal then the fundus of the stomach is supplied by the short gastric arteries so this short gastric artery they are the one which supplies the fundus of the stomach and these short gastric artery are just branches of the splenic artery the 
I just branches of splenic artery. So the answer here is just A. Which of the following arteries supplies the midi gut? So this question it depends on how fast your lecture is, and it can be in your test one or test two. So when you look at the mid gut, first we have the foregut. So we have the foregut. And the foregut is normally supplied by the colic trunk. So the branches of the colic trunk are the one which supplies the, the foregut. And then for the mid gut, for the mid gut, it is supplied by the superior mesentery artery. Superior mesentery artery mesenteric artery mesenteric artery yeah and then we have the hind gut the hind gut okay the hind gut is normally supplied by the inferior mesenteric artery so the answer here is just the superior mesenteric artery all right let's quickly move on and look at the next question so the next question is um, formation of the portal vein is by the unification of veins behind the neck of the pancreas. So the veins, the the veins which are behind the pancreas are just one, the the splenic nerve and the superior mesenteric artery. So the splenic nerve and the superior mesenteric artery they come together to form the portal. Vent. So the answer there was just uh, D. Blood from the liver to the inferior vena cava passes via the what? So you know that the liver, you need to talk about the hepatic artery and the hepatic vein. So since we are talking about something that is taking blood away, so the, it's taking blood away from the liver, so that simply means that we are talking about the vein. Which of these structures are the major determinant of vascular resistance? So this is just a direct question and the answer is the anteriors. Which of the following structure drains at the junction of the subclavian with the terminal jugular vein on the left side? Okay, so this one I've already explained it in the previous part and the answer is just the thoracic duct. So the thoracic duct it's a duct which normally uh, drains into the subgravian vein. Okay, let's quickly move on and look at the next question. So, all primary oocytes are formed by so all primary oocytes are formed by month five of fetal life. So you need to understand that the meiosis meiosis one for for the female is that during fetal life it happens during fetal life yeah and then during fetal life the this meiosis one does not finish instead it will be arrested at prophase one so it will be arrested at prophase one and it will wait until puberty that's when now uh it will finish up what it started but even at puberty when it starts it's going to be arrested at metaphase where do primordial germ cells initially develop so the primordial germ cells they normally form in in the yolk sac they normally form in the yolk sac and this is during week four of embryonic development yeah so this question that question are all about gametogenesis how many DNA does a primary spermatocyte have? So it just has the 4N. The lateral mesoderm is divided into two distinct layers by the formation of just the intraembryonic column. So the intraembryonic column is the one which leads to, to the division between the between the two layers of the two layers of uh, the lateral mesoderm. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining me. This was Dr. Possibility from Excel Academy, and please subscribe to my YouTube channel because I have a lot of content that I'm going to upload. Thank
Thank you very much. Have a blessing.